take your questions. Coach uh, Sarantola, what, what, what do you see going on with him right now? Not trusting his stuff. So he's, uh, I guess he looks like he's kind of hoping it's a strike instead of making it a strike. Um, both, both weeks, Coach Foxhall comes down and it's electric in the bullpen. He's throwing strikes. That's uh, just a young kid fighting the game a little bit right now. He, he works extremely hard, ultra talented, but uh, he's got to get out there and compete a little bit more between the lines. You got a couple of really good innings from Jack Egan there. What were you seeing from him? Um, you know, he's, he's been struggling to throw his breaking ball for a strike, and he's been working really hard on it in practice. And I think the couple of adjustments he's made got his breaking ball in there, and his fastball just makes his fastball even better. So I, I was really excited with him tonight. Right, Jordan, four for five tonight. Uh, is it safe to say the slump is over for him? Yeah, I hope so. So he was pretty good, I, especially the last ball. He, you know, he's starting to drive some baseballs now, too, especially to his pull side, which he didn't do a lot of early in the year. So what's what's the real story about the goggles? Like he got a new prescription or he wasn't wearing them? I mean, it's like we've heard a, a variety of things. What's the truth? Uh, well, when he was doing really bad, I think Coach Kodra said, hey, you better get those goggles back on. So um, I don't know if they make a huge difference, but um, he's hitting better with them. So I think he's seeing the baseball a little bit better. Um, and, you know, he had, he, had, he had lost a pair, so he just, just quit using them. And, he liked to wear his sunglasses and contacts in the outfield for defense, so that was one reason he wanted to switch over. But um, if he's hitting with them, I'm, I'm all in. We got a short week now with LSU coming in. Does that change up anything with uh, just having one extra, one less extra day to prepare? No, I don't think so. I mean, we'll uh, we, we'll get a good practice tomorrow and be ready to go Thursday night. Uh, I know the guys are excited. That's the hard part right now for us. Is it's um, these weekends are so intense and so much on the line. The, the midweeks get a little be a little bit harder. You know, for me, I'm trying to motivate as much as I can. It's not just about who we're playing. It's just those weekends are so intense. The crowds are so big. Um, they they enjoy playing in those games. So they'll be ready to go. What have you seen from LSU? You know, um, it's power arms. You know, as I watch them, and I was actually watching one of their games this morning. Just power arms. Uh, we know there's some high end bats in there that they have, especially in their first four or five guys in the lineup. You're gonna have to have to really pitch and make pitches and then they they have they do a nice job with their speed they usually are pretty athletic so they can put some pressure on you what's the confidence level like right now with, with what you guys have done the first two weekends with where you sit the polls and all that whole thing there i know polls and stuff don't really matter but just the confidence level in that room right I, now i think they 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 trust each other i think is the biggest thing their confidence is high they they have a lot of confidence in each other um and they feel like they can beat anybody and so um I think they're smart enough to realize anybody can beat them too, but they have a, they have a real confidence about them. They've had it all year long, and um, um, I see them continuing. How do you coach Bob Foxhall did on shorting the guys almost uh, almost two days now the way the way this schedule is going to be this weekend? Um, well, everybody just bumps up a day. You know, it really doesn't. The midweek stuff doesn't affect us too much. I mean, last week we had two midweeks. That really shorted us more than anything. This week just playing one. Um, Ethan moves up a day and he starts preparing just one day less. And same with JT. Um, we'll figure out our, our game three starter as we get to it. We just don't know right now. It'll probably depend on how the weekend goes. Try to figure out some things that way. But uh, Ethan's done it his whole career. I mean, when you play in the SEC, it happens a couple times every year. Um, JT probably be one of his first times, but he's you know he's he's so athletic. He's just he's ready to go. What have the conversations been keen about this uncertainty? Keegan is an unbelievable kid, and he's got good stuff, but he just, you know, and, and he's had a little bit of hard luck in there. So, uh, you know, but I told him today, I think a little bit of the hard luck's waiting for him to fight through it. Sometimes this game just really forces you to fight through it, and that's kind of what he's going through right now. He's had some good starts for us. The last two have just been a little a little tough, and we, we haven't helped him in that, that inning that he's had problems with, but um, he's going to have to fight through it. We need him. We just don't, you know, he's, it's, he's too good, and, uh, you know, he's – really invested in the program and how he goes about his work. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. You're going to see him out there any, sometime soon. With Eric struggling, you've got a, Pete, you got a couple of innings tonight too. What do you feel like that, that sort of back end of the starting rotation is that? That's, you know, that's a piece we're, we're having to really look at right now. I mean, I, I um, you know, we've been trying to get Eric going. Um, we don't start Peyton because we're hoping we maybe need to use him this weekend. So we're trying to minimize Peyton. He probably got stretched a little bit more than we wanted to. but. Um, you know that's that's our bullpen's in such good shape right now. We don't want to we don't want to really shake that up too much. So you try to get Lee Bell up and get him out quickly. Yeah, we were just trying to get him up. Just you know, for some of those guys, we were gonna do it with Barlow too. 
it just ends up being their bullpen. Right. You know, if you can get them out there for 10, 12 pitches, it's just like a bullpen. Except it's in a game, which is almost a little bit better because, you know, when you're slot guys, they, they, they need to pitch a little bit more than some of the others. Who, who's somebody that you would consider if you don't go to Keegan on game three? I don't know right now. I really, it's, it's really up in the air. I mean, it could go to probably five or six guys. It's going to probably depend on who we use. Because for us on Sundays with the way our bullpen is, we can run a guy out there for one time through the lineup. You know, it doesn't have to be a guy to go six innings. And so, um, anybody on the roster probably except for Ethan and JT and probably Cole, you know, I'd say those guys. But, we, you know, it could be just how we match up. LSU's tough because they have so many lefties. And they have a lefty-heavy lineup. I asked you a couple weeks ago about the shift, and I said, you know, I haven't seen much of that MSU. Considering new trends, would you, would you go with an opener? What's it? Uh, that we've talked about a little bit like that. I mean, we just don't, it's not so much an opener, it's just somebody who can get us through the lineup the first time. I guess that's what an opener does. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, it could kind of be in that world. 